Fall of Man. Das war die Polizei. Ja, ja, Europe is exploding as citizens are rising up and revolting against the continent's draconian COVID restrictions. In this video, we're going to take a look at the causes behind the massive citizen uprising, where it's manifesting itself the most, and why the political ramifications of this uprising promise to make Europe more populous than ever before. You're not going to want to miss this. Greetings, everyone. Dr. Steve here with you. Wonderful to be with you, as always. We're here to give you conservative hope in the midst of these turbulent times by helping you to think better so you can feel better. So if you haven't already done so, you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. We would love to have you as a regular part of this channel. Also, make sure to subscribe to our brand new Rumble channel. For all you Rumble fans, all you have to do is click on the link below to do that. And for you podcast fans, we're now one of the top 20 podcasts in the nation for political commentary. And with your support, we're fast making our way to number one. So make sure to click on that link below and sign up for our various podcast platforms. Now, before we dive into things here, let's give a shout out to the sponsor of this video. And that's the makers of this awesome motion detector, ultra bright solar nightlight. You know, you can install it anywhere because it's wireless and you never need to worry about buying batteries. And that's because it's powered with the solar powered high battery storage packets equipped with motion detectors. It becomes an entertainment light for the patio and the barbecue with a click of a button. And its motion detectors offer effective deterrence against burglars. And best of all, you don't have to spend a fortune for any of it. If you click on the link below right now, you'll save 52% off as well as free shipping to boot. So what could be better? Don't wait. Click on that link below or visit nightsolarlight.com and bring its light to the dark spaces in your home today. All right, gang, let's dive right in here. Europe is blowing up. I mean, I just, there's really no other way of putting it. Europeans are rising up in their frustrations with the EU and the bullies in Brussels and their own globalist establishment leaders have reached a breaking point. And so the continent is exploding. Now, if you don't know, the latest point of contention is what many are calling the vaccine fiasco that's been bumbled by the EU, the European Union. The Anglo-Swedish company AstraZeneca, which the EU has contracted to deliver the vaccine, having reportedly purchased upwards of about 400 million doses, they recently announced that the vaccine rollout would be delayed due to production issues. Now, as of now, they've only been able to deliver about 31 million doses to the EU, but in AstraZeneca's defense, the production issues have been hampered by the EU's draconian and Byzantine regulation systems, which are being blamed, at least in part, for slowing down production. And so needless to say, with the delays in vaccine procurement, European populations are starting to get very, very upset. Now, just to give you a sense of how the Brits are gloating as of today, Britain, which just successfully emancipated themselves from the EU, well, for the most part, Northern Ireland is still under EU protocols, but regardless, as of today, I believe nearly 9 million Brits have been vaccinated in the UK. It's the third largest total in the world. By contrast, the whole of the European Union has barely vaccinated 10 million people, despite the fact that they have 27 member nations. So it's just an abject disaster. This rollout, it's a disaster from the vantage point of the AstraZeneca problem. At least it appears to me as such. It's clearly a disaster for the EU with its Byzantine regulatory restrictions that they're subjecting AstraZeneca to. Needless to say, the EU's vaccine fiasco is promising to work itself out into some pretty severe political consequences, causing what some are calling a bitter election upheaval, particularly in France, Germany, and the, and the Netherlands, where elections are coming up. As the British Express is reporting, scholars at the Oxford-based think tank Europe Intelligence are arguing that the EU's vaccine crisis is spiraling out into three interrelated effects. The vaccine crisis is obviously causing, first, a prolonged lockdown. Secondly, it's causing a double-dip recession. And thirdly, it's obviously resulting in an anti-incumbent mood among voters. And with elections in the Netherlands next month in March, in Germany in September, and in France in April of next year, 2022, 
we may be seeing a massive political upheaval as a result of these tensions. In many ways, Germany is in effect at the epicenter of the EU vaccine fiasco because it was German Chancellor Angela Merkel who most notably insisted that European governments shift the responsibility for vaccination procurement to the EU, to Brussels. Now, her rationale was that Germany could be seen as inordinately benefiting from vaccine procurement since the vaccine was being produced by a German company, Pfizer. Well, whatever Merkel's intentions were, that move to centralize vaccine procurement in Brussels has clearly backfired. And so as Merkel's approval rating tanks, she's taking her party, the center-right Christian Democrats, with her. And pundits are recognizing one of the major beneficiaries of this center-right tanking is indeed the nationalist populist AFD, the alternative for Germany, whose membership ranks are swelling up out of frustration with the lockdowns. In France, pundits are increasingly recognizing that President Emmanuel Macron may indeed lose to the nationalist right superstar Marine Le Pen. The Macron presidency has been shell-shocked with anger over the vaccine fiasco, and Marine Le Pen is obviously poised to be the main beneficiary of that anger. And in the Netherlands, massive protests have erupted in response to their draconian COVID lockdown. Over the last several days, there have been several nights of violent protests and rioting across the nation, causing businesses to close up early, board up their shops. There have been hundreds of arrests across the country. The riots actually, they started with the torching of a coronavirus testing center in a fishing village, a stark symbol of the anger that's been triggered around the nation over the tough coronavirus lockdown that's been in force since mid-December. The protests have turned increasingly violent, with rioters pelting police with rocks, fireworks, Molotov cocktails, including the looting and vandalizing of a number of shops in the cities of Rotterdam and Den Bosch. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. France, Germany, Netherlands, they're just the beginning. Populist protests are exploding all over Europe in defiance of their draconian lockdowns. But first, I am so excited to announce that we have a brand new alt-tech directory called the New Conservative Survival Guide to Big Tech Censorship, which you can get absolutely free by clicking on the link below. Now, this is a guide that's going to give you all of the alternative social media sites that you can go to that have all your favorite independent content creators, but of course, without any of the censorship that we've been exposed to by big tech. It's also going to give you insights into what scholars are calling an emerging post-Google age. How does that sound? It's absolutely free as an ebook download, my gift to you, and it's yours simply by clicking on the link below. So don't let big tech censors get in the way of your favorite content creators. Click on the link below and enjoy your survival guide to big tech censorship today. All right, so like I said, France, Germany, and the Netherlands, they really are just the tip of the iceberg of this continent-wide populist revolt. Take a look at the scenes coming out of Italy. Now, what you're seeing here are police officers joining the anti-lockdown protesters in solidarity. Italy's government's collapsing as we speak. Their leftist prime minister, Giuseppe Conte, has resigned. And the government has entered into several days of talks to see if a new government can be formed. The uh, nationalist right leaders, Matteo Savini of Lega, and Giorgio Maloney, the Brothers of Italy, they're calling for snap elections where the nationalist right looks like they will indeed take over. They're surging in the polls as Italians have had it with their leftist government. In Vienna, the nationalist populist right has amassed tens of thousands of protesters who, according to Reuters, have faced off with police and riot gear. Austria is currently in its third national lockdown and the nationalist populist Austrian Freedom Party is calling on all Austrian citizens to rise up against what they're calling Corona Madness. It's estimated that 10,000 demonstrators protested the Austrian government's lockdown restrictions, even though authorities outlawed the mass protests, of course, because of social distancing concerns. And in Denmark, there have been numerous arrests after demonstrations against the nation's COVID restrictions turn violent, including the burning of a puppet of the Danish prime minister in effigy, a leftist uh, prime minister. Frankly, I think it's safe to say that when you see the Danes beginning to rise up and demonstrate even violently, 
you know Europe as a whole is exploding. There's no question that the COVID restrictions that have been imposed on European populations over the last year have indeed run their course. And it appears more and more likely that populist-driven political earthquakes are soon to follow. So like we say over and over again on this channel with this European uprising, you can be sure the worldwide populist revolt really is just beginning. Now, before you go, make sure to like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to my channel. And you'll definitely want to check out my latest video. I just uploaded it on how Mark Zuckerberg has been exposed. A Facebook insider leaks video of executives admitting that they are actively engaged in censoring conservative voices, all as more and more nations throughout the world are fighting back against big tech censorship. You're not going to want to miss it. So make sure to click on the link, and I will see you over there. God bless.